flesh, lust of the eyes. Can you elaborate? Humans are never satisfied. You always crave more. Bigger house, bigger car, more money, more power. The list goes on and on. I just take their natural ambitious desire, pervert it, and use it against them for their own destruction. My plan is to allow them to never be content. As long as I can keep them craving what others have, I can depend on them to argue, fight, even kill to get it. Humans are so easily tricked into jealousy. And you know what they say. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yes, I have. Hello, my people. Thanks for passing by. Welcome back to my channel. Now, there's a video that is doing rounds. I don't know whether you have seen it, but uh, it's, for me it's terrifying. I was so terrified the first time I saw it because of how accurate the information contained therein is. That video just coincides with everything I believe in. Uh, it's of some someone or the devil. I don't know whether it's the real devil, but it's up to you to judge about it. I, it for me, it seems like it's someone wearing a mask. Is he really the devil? Is he possessed by the spirit of the devil that is talking through him? Who is this guy? But then it's whatever he was talking about that really shocked me. Guys, we are really we are living in dangerous times. We are living in times that are very interesting. So much is changing and so much is happening at the same time and at a very fast rate. So you better watch out that you are not carried away. Uh, please watch, comment, subscribe, and uh, see you on the next video. You probably do. Uh, first, I want to say thank you to agreeing to this interview. Because I know you are a very, very busy person. Yes. I usually like to fly under the radar. But I figured, since I'm already on the campaign trail, why not? Okay. First, let's talk about your reign. Now, you've had a fairly long one. What would you attribute to your success and popularity? Oh, that's easy. Every generation is the same. I appeal to their lust and ego. I offer all the sex, wealth, and fame a person could want. Do as thou wilt has been my campaign slogan from the start. And my campaign platform hasn't changed either. I run on the same three issues every generation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Okay, okay. When you say lust of the flesh, what exactly do you mean? Come on now. What do I mean? Isn't it obvious? I just use humans' own innate physical desires against them. And since sexual desire seems to be the most powerful, I usually run with that. Now, I didn't create sex, but I must say I've done a superb job at perverting it. Take pornography, for example. Well, you should know a lot about this one, Ivan. Weren't you addicted to porn? <clears throat> um, this interview is about you, uh, not about me. Can we get back on subject? <clears throat> <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. What I do is gradually get someone addicted to porn. And once Lust has had his full work and he and she can no longer restrain themselves, they usually look to act out their fantasies on someone. And sometimes, that someone is a child. Now, if my plan plays out perfectly. That abused child will eventually turn to a life of promiscuity and perversion themselves, allowing me to continue my vicious cycle. And here's the kicker. Many of those abused girls end up right in the porn industry. Now, how's that for irony? Mm. The second thing you had mentioned, I believe, you said, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Can you elaborate? Humans are never satisfied. You always crave more. Bigger house, bigger car, more money, more power. The list goes on and on. I just take their natural ambitious desire, pervert it, and use it against them for their own destruction. My plan is to allow them to never be content. As long as I can keep them craving what others have, 
I can depend on them to argue, fight, even kill to get it. Humans are so easily tricked into jealousy. And you know what they say. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yes, I have heard that before. The last thing you had mentioned was, I believe, pride of life. Now, how does this fit into your campaign platform? Humans are always on a quest for knowledge. I tricked the first humans to seek carnal knowledge over godly wisdom. And it's worked like a charm every generation since. With more knowledge comes more pride. And you know pride is my specialty. And since humans don't like to keep God in their wisdom, I'm able to seduce them with all types of things to help puff up their ego. Lately, fame has been my biggest seller. Who doesn't like attention and feeling more important than the next person? Once I make them famous, I can really use them to promote my agenda. With their help, I've convinced half of the world to not only accept sin, but to celebrate it. Do you know what has been my most enjoyable pride campaign to date? No, what? Well, my gay pride campaign, of course. Not only do I get the chance to promote your own self-destruction, I get to use God's logo, the rainbow, to do it. Love is love, right? <laughs> my plan not only prevents you worthless humans from reproducing, it distorts the gender roles and allows me to bring all types of chaos and confusion upon your pathetic societies. This has been so successful, I've got men convinced they're women. And women convince their men, and some convince they're no gender at all. And I've got two more pride initiative campaigns I'd like to introduce in the near future. Mm. Really? I'm guessing you probably want me to ask you what they are, right? Well, first, it's abortion pride. Now, I think we can pull this off. Society is definitely ready for it. I've enlisted to help a Planned Parenthood to work with marketing and promotions. And all we'll have to do is silence the so-called abolitionists and pro-lifers because the rest of the church doesn't seem to care. And second is pedophilia pride. Now, society might not be ready for this one just yet, so we'll hold off. I need to desensitize them a little more before we introduce it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's change gears for a minute and talk about policy. Some may consider your policies destructive, dangerous even, uh, what would be your response to that? What would you say to your detractors? All of my policies are aimed to do one of three things. Either steal, kill, or destroy. And if it's not doing one or all three of those things, then it's not in my agenda and I'm not promoting it. Okay, okay. I'm happy you said that. It seems as if you promote your agenda differently to different, to different ethnicities. Uh, if so, why? Of course. I'd be a fool not to. Take black people, for instance. As a people, they're super spiritual. So I can't really convince them that there is no God. What I have been able to do as of late is convince them that he's not the God of the Bible. Now, I've been real successful at promoting black consciousness and Islam in their communities. I'm so happy you mentioned black people. It seems as if we've been at the very top of your agenda for quite some time. Why is that? A few reasons. Black people helped me reach the masses. Now, as you know, I was over music in heaven. My beats were so dope, I got over a third of the angels to follow me. And once I got here to the earth, I needed artists and entertainers to help me promote my message here. Who better than black people? Black people possess all the natural rhythm and music ability that I need. And it's easy for me to influence them with money since so many of them grew up without it. Another reason I target black people is because they're strong mentally and physically. If black men were to ever find their identity in Christ, <laughs> I'd be in trouble. So I try my best to destroy the black family structure and keep black men away from his family and the church. Drugs and incarceration are a couple of my more popular means. Without the head of the household present, I can become the head and influence the children without too much resistance. So you mean to tell me that your policies are intentionally racist against black people? Racist? <laughs> this has got to be the best law I've ever come up with. 
Now, I can't believe that humans still believe they're different races. But to answer your question, yes. It has always been my policy to target and isolate a group of people. And out of all my strategies, this skin color thing has worked the best. I definitely want to keep white people and black people separated. As long as I can keep black people bitter and white people offended, I'm good. Hopefully black people will never forgive. That way I can continue to use them. Okay, what, my question is, what role, if any, does your administration play in this black-on-black -black crime epidemic? <laughs> Well, as great as my administration is, we can't take all the credit for this. Black people help us tremendously. By aborting so many of their babies, they allow us to bring death to their communities. As the Bible says, they sow the wind and they reap a whirlwind. Mm. When implementing all of these policies, do you ever face any resistance or pushback? And if so, from who? One group in particular try to oppose every policy I try to implement. I would be so much further along with my agenda if it wasn't for them. Really? So what group is that? Those pesky, born-again Jesus followers. They're a real thorn in my side. Every generation, they come together and try to dismantle one of my signature policies. Now, I've convinced half of the world that Jesus didn't exist and the other half that he wasn't divine. But I can't seem to convince them. They seem hell-bent on telling everybody about him and spreading his message. And some of them believe he's coming to unseat me in this generation. <laughs> Crazy, huh? I'll tell you, those idiots are really messing with my legacy. So, Lucifer, how does that make you feel when... Uh us idiots say that Jesus possibly could be coming back in this generation to unseat you. Huh. Y'all been saying that for centuries. I just use it as motivation to get as much of my agenda pushed through and deceive as many people as possible before he returns. I think I've done pretty well. My record speaks for itself. About 150,000 people die each day, and most of them don't know Jesus. 150,000 people. Whew. Well, you know what? This concludes our interview. Uh, I want to say thank you for an open, honest, pretty frank discussion with me. Uh, is there any last words you would like to leave with our viewing audience? Yes. I'd like to take this moment and give a special thank you to two groups of people. First, I want to say thank you to all my followers. You are the hands and feet of my administration and we could do nothing without you. Keep up the good work, spread my message. And second, I'd like to say thank you to the divided church. I love the way you argue and use your passions to fight amongst each other. Keep up the good work. There's really no rush to tell people about Jesus. You all have plenty of time.